Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara and happy 2024. I am so excited about today's video that I actually was not planning to film this video today. There was a different video I was supposed to film but I was just so excited about another Project Pan series that I was like, you know what? This is what I'm excited about so let's just film this one first. This is the introduction to my 2024 Project Pan series where I will introduce you to all of the products that I will be attempting to pan over the course of 2024. I'm not gonna give the rundown on how project panning works because it's kind of different for everyone. But for me, these are products that I am trying to focus on in order to get more use out of so that I can hopefully finish them off one day. And these tend to be products that I neglect. So these are not the things that I will automatically reach for in my collection. They're not necessarily favorites. Sometimes they are, but sometimes in order for me to use these things, I need to have a specific focus on them such as this. So I don't say like a certain number of times that I would like to use each of these products. I don't set a goal like that, but I do just have an overall goal of progress on all of these and I do like to say what my predictions are in terms of how long something will take to be used up and if I think I will have it done by the next update. So at the end of every video I sort of talk through okay like is this going to be done? Is that going to be done? How long do I think? Because I, I find it useful even just for myself to try to understand like how in tune I am with my makeup usage and if I'm good at predicting how long things take. I think I've gotten better but I always think that products are not going to take as long as they actually do to finish up. So it's a good exercise. I would recommend you doing it. So my 2024 project is starting out with 10. I don't have any skincare or anything today so all of these products are makeup and I tried to select some products that I haven't featured a million times on my channel before. If you have watched my videos for a while you know that when I am intent on finishing a product I will stick it into every possible series that I can in order to get it used up because for me that is the best way to motivate myself to actually use it regularly. But of course this is a new year and so I wanted to start fresh with some products. So new year, same camera problems. Again, I wanted to sort of start fresh with some products and the first ones are these Milk Makeup Blushes. The reason they're already twisted up is because, well, I was filming and it, it didn't record, but also I can't can't untwist them. That is a feature of this blush that I entirely forgot about. I on I don't know how to push it down. I think I'm gonna have to fiddle with this after. But these are two blushes that are cream, which is my preferred texture consistency these days. But I don't like the formula of these. They're just so I don't know, like slippery, greasy. I think that's what it is. They're like they're oily, and I hate that. I. I don't like that feeling, but these kinds of blushes are very popular, these milk blushes. I don't get the hype, but the shades are nice. So I've swatched them here on my hand. This is in the shade Work. This was part of the Sephora birthday present a couple years ago. And I like that shade better because it is more matte. This one is the Glimmer Glow Oil Lip and Cheek, and it's much more shimmery as you can see, and a lot lighter. It it doesn't really function as a blush by itself. It just doesn't have enough oomph or pigment to it. But I do think that these work well on like a no makeup makeup look, like a an actual no makeup makeup look where I'm not using any base products because they are just that like sheer, sheer wash of color that it looks like your cheeks could just naturally look that way. These don't really work if you have makeup on. Like if you got foundation and concealer, your skin is just gonna swallow these. Those products do not work together. But if you're the kind of person that will just put on blush and a bit of mascara and be good to go, I think that's who these are aimed at. But I'm gonna see how much use I can get out of them because I am loving cream blushes. And also because you need to use so much of these in order for them to show up, maybe it'll be easy to use them. But then again, because I don't like these products, maybe it won't be, maybe it'll be a real challenge. But I have not really used these 
in a long time. And of course, project hands are the best way to motivate myself to use products. And so that is why I'm putting them in here. Maybe we can, you know, rediscover different ways to use them or I'll find out I actually love them, whatever it is. But yes, we are putting both of these blushes in. I don't know if I'll use them in tandem, but I see them the same way and I like them about equally. So I figured I would just put them both in. We're starting the year with some blushes. I am planning to do a blush roulette this year, so keep your eyes out for that video. I just have a lot of blushes that I do not get very much use out of because I really fixate on one item at a time, but we're trying to get more use out of all of our blushes this year. So the next one, let's talk about brow stuff because I have two brow products that I honestly would ideally like to get both of them finished up this year, but one much more urgently than the other. So this one you have definitely seen before. This is the Sonia Kashuk Brow Duo. We are getting to that point where there's so little left that pieces are just like breaking off of it. Can you see down here, a little chunk fell off. This is one product that I thought I would be done by the end of 2023. And I am pretty disappointed that that did not happen because the pan, you know, there was a lot of pan, but I don't use this every single day. I probably use this four days a week. And because I haven't been using it as another type of product, like I haven't used it as eyeshadow or eyeliner, you know, it's, it's pretty slow to get used up. I did use it as eyeshadow one day last week and I quite liked how that looked. If I took a picture, I will insert it here, but you know, it was just like a, a basic brown shade. I do prefer my browns to be a little bit lighter than this, but it worked in a pinch and I might continue doing that just as an effort to use this up. But I think this is gonna be the first product out of this Project Pan series that is done. And my expectation is that for my next update, this will be finished. I update this series every two months. So beginning of March, if this is not done, I'm gonna be really disappointed. It's not even a product that I dislike. And so I'm trying intently to get it out. It's just that it's taken longer than I thought it would. You know what I mean? Like once you hit pan, you're like, okay, we're there. We're about to finish it. And really that is not the case, but yeah, this is getting done soon. And that's, that's why I have to put it in this project pan. So apologies that you've seen this before, but it, it needs to be it here. The other brow product is a very different. It is this Mac dirty blonde fluid line brow gel cream. I have not seen one of these in a long time, but I think they were semi-popular back in the day. I probably got it in like 2016 or so. So it's very old, but it seems fine. The texture consistency has not changed as far as I know, but I find this pretty dark on my brows, even though I'm pretty sure this is the lightest shade that they had. It might work better now than it did back when I had blonde hair because I can kind of get away with making my brows a little bit darker because my hair is darker, whereas before it was quite a contrast. But I haven't reached for this in a long time. I do find it to be quite a bit more work to use this gel product than a powder because you have to be a little bit more precise. And I also don't feel like I have the ideal applicator for this like I need a thinner brow brush you know to apply it but anyways we're gonna be playing around with this I'm looking forward to having this in my makeup rotation just because yeah I have not <laughs> used anything but this for a while so I think I'm probably gonna start using this before I finish this up just for a little bit of a variety and also because I fully expect to finish this before March and so this is gonna be the next one in line but Yes, both of these things are eyebrow products that I quite like, but they are very different from each other. Next up, let's talk about, hmm, I've got two trackable things in this project in terms of like tracking on a piece of paper how much product is left, and those tend to be fairly satisfying. So let's talk about those now. Ooh, actually I think I've got three of those, but this is the one that has been featured most often in videos because it is fairly small now, but when I started trying to pan it, it was so much bigger. Like my progress on this has been very impressive. This is just the Wet n Wild eyeliner in copper. I don't love it, but this is a pretty good shade for brown eyeliner for me. And 
here's the tracking I've done. So let's see what progress we have made as of today. I don't even remember when I last tracked this, probably at the end of my Graver Project pants of about two months ago, maybe. So let's see where we're at. Mm, very, very, very tiny progress. I will just mark it right below. That is where we are at now. Can you see there? Because I'm using this, but I'm not using it that much. Maybe, maybe twice a week. But again, it's still getting regular use. And so I think that this is something that I will continue to see progress on, even if it is slower than I would like. Okay, let's move on to another trackable product. I think I think we should do one that's going to be a little bit more optimistic. At least I think it's it's going to be better. This is a lip liner from Kiko Milano. So I did have this in one of my projects last year in my lipstick project pan. This is something that I haven't decided if I should do again this year. I might do an abbreviated version of it, like do it for just part of the year or maybe only update every three to four months just because I have a lot of project pans going on and I want to be able to like show progress each time. And if I have all of these different products that I'm working on at once, it, you know, it's not as satisfying. I don't make as much progress on things. But anyways, this is the Kiko lip liner in the shade Smart Fusion and it's like a mauve, grayish mauve tone. I don't like it. Okay, I'll say that off the bat. I don't like it. It is fun to use something that is such a different shade than I would gravitate towards naturally though. So I like that it's different, but organically, this is not something I would reach for or wear out and about on my own. But let's see if we have ended up making progress on it despite my dislike of it. <gasps> we made so much progress. This is the most progress that I have made on this so far since I brought it into the project pan. I should probably be using a pen rather than a lip product because lip products get so, so smudgy. So there we go. This is where we were at before and this is where we are at now. And this is also a good shade to use as like that cherry cola trend. You know what I mean? Where it's like dark on the outside and like red on the inside, which I don't really like, but you know, it's still fun to experiment and maybe there'll be another trend coming along that I end up liking. So still useful to have something that is a little different than what I would organically reach for. And the final product that is trackable, <laughs> you're probably not too excited to see this because I am not too excited to see it. But since I had this in my project pan for a while and then I removed it, but since removing it from my project pan, I don't think I've reached for it like even five times since then. So I really need to have this in a project pan or else I'm not gonna reach for it. Whereas with this eyeliner, like I will reach for it even if it's not in a project, but this one, no, I need to really force myself to do it. So this is the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk. I mean, this is a very popular product, but I just can't seem to figure out a way to make it work. A lot of people say this works well as a base under colorful eyeshadows, but I, I don't like the consistency at all on my eyes. I think I need to try it as a highlight, but like in a different way. Some people use it a little bit on the bridge of their nose and then there, or maybe like under the eyebrows or on the cheekbones, but you need such a small amount because as you can see, it's so opaque. So you really need to work at it. So I just need to, play around with this a little bit because hopefully I can find a way to make it work. I know so many people enjoy this product and I want to be one of them. I also really like cream highlight these days. So it seems like it could be a product that would work for me, but let's, let's see where the progress is at because I have not tracked this for a while. Ooh, no, I don't think there's any progress that's been made, but I also tracked it with this chubby stick for whatever reason. So it's all white. So you probably can't see anyways, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at now. Yeah, I, this is the biggest question mark for me probably because I have no idea what direction it's gonna go. Like maybe I will re-fall in love with this, but maybe I will hate it just as much as I did in the past. Cause I think when I last had it in my project pan, it wasn't big like all over TikTok, people weren't using it. So I didn't know that it would be useful as a highlight. I only used it on the eyes, <sighs> but fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Okay. Hey, let's go for a product that I have probably only mentioned once. This is the ColourPop LAX liquid lipstick. Yes, a liquid lipstick. I don't 
think that I've ever had a liquid lipstick in my project pan. I've had a lot of lipsticks in project pans, but liquid lipstick, like you just need to be in the exact right mood or like have the exact right occasion for a liquid lipstick. But look how beautiful that is. I rediscovered this about a month ago. No, I guess it was more than that. When I was filming my makeup inventory and I realized that some of these liquid lipsticks are really, really dried out now. This one was almost ready to go, but I couldn't say goodbye to it because I have nothing else like that. And it's also so beautiful. So I thought, oh, maybe, you know, end of 2023, I'll get rid of it then, but I'll use it a few more times before then. But I'm, I still, I still was not ready. So I've decided that I will keep this around a little longer. I do want to give an end date to this. So for now I'm saying either two or three updates, I'm going to declutter this. So that sort of gives me, you know, the winter period when it's more acceptable to wear dark lips as right now. So yeah, either March or May, I'm going to declutter this, but I'm really hoping that I'll be able to get some good use out of it before then. It is one of the most bold lip products in my collection, not the most, I've got some that are even bolder. <laughs> if you know, but it's, it's still a lot. And it's really tricky to wear out because if you're drinking, if you're eating, it looks really bad in the middle, like the middle part will just come off. So you have like around the edges and then getting it off, you know, with most lipsticks, if you sort of rub it away, even if you don't have makeup remover, if you're just sort of like using toilet paper or even like the back of your hand, like wiping it off, it will fade, but that does not work with this. So you can only really get rid of it with makeup remover, which is why it is really hard to wear it. You just have to basically keep applying it whenever it's looking not so good. But I'm still enjoy this as a product to wear at home to, you know, just like feel bold when I look in the mirror. That's what I'm trying to do with this. I'm not setting up the expectation that I'm going to wear this to all of my parties in January and, you know, all my social activities, because I don't think that's realistic, but I still want to get some more use out of this. So it's, it's mostly dried down, you see, so it's good. It's better than some lip products in that way, but liquid lipsticks are way out. <laughs> like they're just, they're not really used in 2024. They haven't been for a few years. This was big in like 2016. I think I still have like eight liquid lipsticks <laughs> that are somehow still sticking around and haven't dried out yet. Do you guys still have and or use them? I know they are not popular anymore, but I still like them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we sometimes we move on from beauty trends too quickly, or maybe we just adopt them too quickly. Like maybe I shouldn't have bought 10 liquid lipsticks when they were big and thought about the fact that the formula is like not very versatile and useful for everyday life. I'm sure we will come to this conclusion about some types of products that are super popular right now. But anyways, We've just got a couple more products to talk about. So this is the MAC Highlight and Soft and Gentle. It broke one day and this was like the remaining, like what was sort of like left on top, you know, chunks. And so I haven't actually used that original container since then. I have been slowly working through the remnants, which I just have in this KBD container. I think I've been doing pretty well recently. I think I would have to compare it to pictures from back when it first broke to see if I actually have been because, you know, highlight is known to be very, very slow. It takes forever to use up highlight, but this is something that I have been enjoying increasingly in recent months, which is kind of surprising. Like it's so blingy and I know this kind of highlight is not popular anymore, just like liquid lipsticks. Like it's just very passe. But I love it, especially with the very like dewy, maybe not dewy, more natural skin look and a cream blush. I feel like it blends really, really well into that. And I don't think that it looks super dated, you know, like look at this look. Maybe if I had really thick foundation on, like very heavy coverage and powder blush, 
then it would combine to have like a very thick artificial look but I think as long as you've got a more natural skin look and a cream blush I think that this works really well with it which cannot be said for all powder products like not all powder products will work well with that like dewy more skin focused makeup look that is so popular now I actually don't have any foundation on right now I feel like my preferences have been changing maybe just later than everyone else because I know everyone else was more into this skin look like a year ago so I'm just late on the bandwagon but I have been loving a more natural cream focused look and even though this highlight is not a cream I think it works like a cream on the skin somehow I think it's just beautiful so I'm happy that I'm still into this because you would think by this point of like having two different containers of one product and trying to project pan it for ages I would be tired of it but now I'm actually loving it and so I'm really happy to have this in my project pan but yeah I will try to compare pictures of what it looked like a year ago two years ago versus now and if I have indeed made any progress unless I've calculated wrong we only have one product left and this is another lip product but I think I'm going to be using it as more of a blush. So we've got the final of the trio of KBD lip products. This is in the shade Outlaw. It's kind of going to be a toss up whether I like this or not because with the trio came from KBD. I loved the like pinky nude shade. I really dislike the darker purpley shade. So this one could go either way. The nude shade is like that lipstick is something that I would seriously consider purchasing if I made it through enough of my blush and lip product collection as it is right now I cannot justify owning that but I I love the texture I love the shade so this one I'm looking forward to seeing if I enjoy it or not I don't think I'll like it on the lips just because I do not wear red lipstick that often and when I do like I, I have three or four red lipsticks which is more than I need for sure but as a blush, I think this could be really nice. I really do love red blushes. I have the Glossier Cloud Paint in a very, very red shade. So this could be nice, but with red, you do need to be careful and not use too much because otherwise it's like way too much. So this would probably take a long time to use up just because I would have to be very, very careful with how much I used up every time. But I still think this is a nice shade and I'm excited to see how I use it. I haven't opened it yet. So, you know, you and I will find out together how I like this product. But that is it for today. <laughs> this has taken a lot of camera, camera issues, battery palms, the usual, but we got it done. And also I just tried to press these down and I can't, like I literally cannot get them down. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might like check out on reddit if anyone has had this issue but like look at the bottom of this it seems like there's product coming out the bottom i took out this little part but i might actually already have to put these in a different container in order to use them because i can't just let them sit out like this you know like this cap is not big enough to to cover it so <laughs> i might have made a mistake by you know putting them all the way up but i needed to see how much was in there you know like how would i be able to compare so another another issue that I have with these milk blushes but that is it for today's video and now let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately so this is an audiobook called Miracle Creek by Angie Kim and this is something that I had had on my TBR to be read list for a long long time but it's a really long one. I think it's like 15 hours on audio. And so because of that, I would really been putting it off. <laughs> like whenever an audiobook that's six to eight hours would come up as available on Libby, my app, then I would always be more likely to read that one. But there was just nothing else that I felt like reading. So I was like, you know what? This one's available. Let's just give it a try. And it is very, very good. It is heavy and it is very long. I have just under four hours left and I feel like already so much has happened like I'm like how long is this book but it's basically a courtroom drama it's really difficult to explain I tried to explain the plot to my partner the other day and I wasn't doing well but basically the author I believe has a child with learning disabilities or possibly autism I feel like there'll be at the end of the book there will be like an author's note that sort of explains her relationship to the narrative but the book focuses on something called HBOT, which is kind of like a fake submarine where 
people choose to go on these dives. So you're basically in this like pressurized submarine and supposedly the pressure or, you know, something about it can help heal people who have certain what's perceived by society as problems. So whether that is like disabilities or infertility, supposedly these things can be healed. I had never heard of HBOT before, so I, I have no background on this, but I think it is a real thing. And what happens is something goes terribly wrong on one of these dives in the submarine. And there is then a court case to figure out how, how things went wrong and what was going on that like led to these circumstances. And all of the characters are very, very well fleshed out. And we discover that everyone is keeping secrets. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. So even though you think it's one thing that happened, everyone else is actually implicated because of their secrets that they're keeping from their parents or their children or their spouses. So it's really interesting. It is sad. It deals with some topics that are very sensitive in terms of like a person's value, how we perceive people with disabilities and also disabled children and how we treat them in society and how we treat their parents and how parents deal with that. So I am really enjoying it and it is something that I would recommend. It's also kind of an, an immigrant story because some of the main characters immigrated to the US from Korea and so that influences their lives and what happens to them and the way that they are treated by the court system. So yes, highly recommend. But yeah, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are as excited about this year's Project Pan series as I am. I know you've seen some of these before, but hopefully you've got enough new products in there that it will still be exciting. Ooh, and I forgot to say, I think that I will have the Sonia Kasha product done by next update, but I think that's gonna be it. And that's perfectly fine because, you know, we're starting fresh. It's the beginning of a new year, new products, all that. So yeah, I'll talk to you next week.